What's up guys, Nick here from Nick's Reptile World and today I'm going to be talking about the False Water Cobra. So the False Water Cobra, or Falsies for short, are a rear fang, venomous, diurnal, colubrid species. Now these guys are not to be mistaken by their famous counterpart, the true cobra, because these guys are actually not a part of the family of a lapid, which is your average front fang venomous snake. Now these guys are a very large, very intelligent species of colubrid. These guys can get anywhere from six to eight feet, but it's, it's been recorded that a female has gotten to about 10 feet, give or take. And these guys usually weigh, you know, upwards of 10 to 15 pounds, give or take, obviously. And they can live 20 years in captivity, but I think with the way that research is going in the scientific world of animals, that we could possibly keep these animals alive for upwards of 30 years. That's a bull move cotton, I know. Now these guys are considered semi-aquatic animals. You know, the reason why that is, is because in nature, they are found usually in little culverts of water or little tiny uh, shallow streams, because this is usually where they're found hunting. Now, these guys are semi-aquatic, so that means that they're not always on, you know, or they're not always swimming around in the water. They also need a large portion of land because they are also terrestrial as well. So one cool predatory uh, adaption that these guys have which really is a true sign of their intelligence, is the fact that when they're in long grass and they're searching for prey, they'll actually utilize their tail by rattling, a, <laughs> rattling it around so that it kind of disperses the, uh, the grass and shifts it around and it startles any prey that may be hiding in that long grass. So it's basically just an easy snack for these guys. Let's talk a little bit about the hemotoxic venom that these guys have. So this is secreted through the Duvernoy's gland, which is located in the back of these animals. Hi, Nova. Hi, Nova. Oh, hi. Anyways, um, so the Duvernoy's gland is basically how they secrete this, this venom in their rear, rear fang. It's not really, more, it's not really a, a traditional fang. It's more or less kind of like little ridges that they utilize to grind the venom into their prey so they have to actually chew on their prey to be able to envenomate them to any degree so the false water cobra has an interesting defensive me mechanism it's called malarian mimicry now this is a mimicry where a animal that is not necessarily prey but they are able to defend themselves from predators they develop this form of mimicry to imitate another animal that's higher, uh, a higher apex predator than they happen to be. Nova, I'm making a video. Stop that. Anyways, other animals that actually kind of do this are, you know, honeybees that mimic yellow jackets. Nova! Stop it. Falsies have an interesting defensive mechanism where they actually get their nickname from. They'll actually flatten out their neck vertebrae to appear almost like a true cobra hooding up in nature. Let's talk a little bit about caring for these animals. So in the wild, falsies are known to eat mainly fish, amphibians, reptiles, such as small lizards, um, mammals and birds, you know, but in captivity, they'll readily accept rodents. The only thing is that they need a nutritionally diverse uh, diet, which is what they have in the wild, and that's what we want to mimic here in captivity as well, keep these animals healthy and living as long as they can. So every now and again, I will supplement a uh, rodent feeding with something like, you know, a strip of uh, thawed fish or, you know, something like, uh, you know, live fish, that works as well. He doesn't really like live fish, so I just cut him up tiny strips that he can easily digest. For an enclosure for these guys, a two foot by one foot by one foot, it's good for a baby, but, you know, a 36 by 24 by 24 or a three foot by two foot by two foot is great for a juvenile, um, you know, and a, a 72 by 24 by 24 or you know a six by two by two is a great beginner one for an adult i suggest you get a little bit bigger than that you know go with an eight by two by two that's a great size because these guys are very active and they will utilize all that space 
Since these guys are semi-aquatic, it's really essential to provide a an area of water that they can bask their entire body in. You know, I'm not saying go out there and create a paludarium where it's one third of it's water, two thirds of it is land. You don't need to go that fancy, you know, but these guys do need a body of water to soak in. It's how they feel natural, calm, and safe. And it also helps with their scales as well when it comes to shedding. So for a substrate, I use cocoa fiber mixed with sphagnum moss. This allows me to kind of get the humidity right where I want it to be. Um, it allows me to adjust it up and down as needed. So let's talk, let's go into the lighting and you know the heating. So I have a 75 watt uh, ceramic heater that provides above head heat for this guy. You guys can use an underbelly heater as long as it's set on a thermostat. Uh, you're gonna wanna have a 5.0 UVB bulb as well. All of this together allows me to utilize a, uh, an 88 to about 90 degree basking spot and a cool side area of about 75 degrees so they can escape the heat when they want to. Humidity should sit around 60 to 75 percent at all times which is easily achieved by one or two mistings a week. Keep in mind that these guys do a lot of burrowing. Um, the, in the wild they do burrow a lot. Uh, so make sure that you have a pretty loose substrate in, in the, you know, the drier area so that they can manipulate the terrain as they want. Last but not least, I really want to, you know, talk about the important thing here, and that's that these guys are venomous. You know, it's very mild venom. Uh, for example, 2015, a 25-year-old was bitten, um, was latched onto for about 30 seconds by a false water cobra. This resulted in, you know, some, some flush tissue, some blushing tissue, um, a little bit of swelling in the area, some, some pins and needles, pain, uh, but it all resolved itself within about seven days. Now, keep in mind, everybody's body is different. That doesn't mean that his body is the same as mine, you know, and that my body is, is the same as yours. If you have a history of allergic reactions to being stung by something like a bee, I wouldn't suggest handling this without a glove or a hook or, you know, getting some experience because you don't want to get bit, you don't want to get sent to the hospital because you, you know, had an allergic reaction. That's no bueno, not good, we don't like that. With that being said, handling with gloves, you can do. Um, it's entirely, a, you know, personal preference. It's, it's, it's up to you guys. You know, I would suggest you start off with, you know, some, using utilizing two hooks, almost treating it like an actual venomous animal until you know that this animal is okay with you, it's, it's used to you, and it's accepting of you handling it. So basically wrapping it up, you know, these guys are pretty high energy. They're high energy, they are a little bit of maintenance because they do poop a lot. They poop in their water, they poop, you know, in their substrate. Um, so there's a lot of maintenance there. Uh, they, they tend to destroy any plant you try to plant in there, no matter how hardy it is, because they like climbing and rubbing against things. Um, they, like I said, they're very active, very spastic in nature, but super intelligent, super great handling, you know, it's a lot of personality in, in, you know, a colubrid, you know, colubrids have great personalities, and that's one thing I do like about them over pythons, is they can be very personable and very intelligent. Anyways, guys, I think this is going to be the, the best intermediate snake out there for you. If you want something that's cool, that's, you know, not normal, something that's outside of, the, you know, the box, you know what I mean? Great animal, 10 out of 10, would recommend this as a pet. I'm Nick from Nick's Reptile World, and I'm going to catch you guys later.